G'day guys, Liam Fitzpatrick here. In this video, I'm going to delve into the world of catching brim on lures. Whoa. I'm going to give you an insight into the Whoa. species and how to target them with a variety of techniques in different situations around the country. That thing crunched it. How good's brim fishing? Like, it's nearly a fish of cast. This is awesome. So as somewhat of a disclaimer, I'm putting it out there that I haven't caught all three brim species that live in Australia. And I haven't <laughs> caught them on every lure and technique that's under the sun. I watched you need it. What I have done is fished the majority of proven baits oh, and techniques oh, that consistently brim. catch brim, no matter the species or the environment they oh, live in. Oh my lord, look at the size of that thing. Look at the size of that brim. Wow. What I'm doing in this video is basically narrating a heap of cool footage I've amassed over the years and going over all the basic brim fishing fundamentals as if I was talking to seasoned brim anglers and newcomers alike. Yes, that's a better one. Finally. Brim fishing. It's easy. I don't know everyone doesn't do it. First of all, we have three species of targeted brim that inhabit the waters of Australia. Well, if you want to get technical and count the scientifically identified species such as sea brim and a number of species they jam brim at the end of, then there's heaps out there. But for now, let's just say there are three. Oh, he's a good one. He's a good one. Oh, he's going back in there, man. It can be found along our coastal beaches and rocky headlands, in tidal saltwater estuaries right up into the tannin-stained brackish waters of the tea tree swamps. They inhabit man-made waterways such as canals and landlocked lakes to naturally occurring coastal lagoons and estuaries. They are found in a myriad of waterways around Australia and are likely to turn up in remote and built-up locations alike. The big appeal of brim fishing with lures is that they can be targeted so many different ways with an array of options. Obviously boats, kayaks and on foot are the norm as these give you access to fishing numerous aquatic and land-based locations alike. He swallowed that bait too. The three species are made up of the yellowfin brim, found on the east coast from North Queensland down to Victoria. This species overlaps in New South Wales, where the southern black brim takes over along the southern coastline into southwestern Australia. Southern black brim are also found at their most southern reaches of the coastal waters around Tasmania. The opposite end of the yellowfin's range has another crossover Pikey. with the northern species, the pikey brim. This occurs around southeast Queensland and the species coexist until they reach the tropics and the pikey claims the northern waters across the top end. Yeah, that's a good little fish. Just ate that BP50, 10 pound litre. Yeah, love it man. Look, that is a tough looking fish. As far as brim go, well, these things will barrel over and eat a jack lure and, you know, smash it, man, like they're, they're a tough old brim species. All right, just going to start off with a little brim prawn. Just got this rigged on 10-pound mainline, 6-pound litre, 120th ounce head, little BP50. See if we can get a brim or something hanging around these edges. The techniques may vary from species to species, but there is one common thread amongst all three. Light tackle spin gear with light braided lines and light fluorocarbon leaders. Oh, dusted. What the hell did that do me on? Damn it. A little tip eater at lunchtime. Dick has dared me to catch one of these guys. Obviously, you know, I'll accept any challenge. And there you go. That's another point to me, Dick. This would be the most common tackle used to present small lures to all species of brim. From topwater baits, crankbaits and jerkbaits to a wide variety of soft plastic oh, lures and creature baits. Brim. The most noticeable difference between bait preference and species is the prey items between the northern species and the southern species. Down south the smelt runs and the minnow type baits tend to warrant the use of smaller profiled lures such as suspending jerkbaits and minnow style baits. I'll give this CK40 a run. There's a bit of rubbly stuff in front of me. It'll bounce over it pretty well. Further up the coast, the preferred hard body lures are deeper bodied lures, such as shallow running and deep diving Holy crankbaits. Shit, there is always going to be a crossover of baits along the coast, as shallow running jerk baits may not suit the technique of deep cranking rock walls. But this comes back to targeting fish where you find them and the best way to present a bait to them. 
See if there's a brim, it's a bloody giant. A couple good ones now. You know, we struggled all morning. We were waiting for that incoming tide. It was going to be a brim session. That was the plan. And it's come together. Incoming tide, round structure, crabs and BP 50s. Look at the size of this pond donkey. That's eating that Eco Gear Aqua BP 50, the brim prawn. Just sat there shaking its head like going crazy when I put a hook in it. <laughs> that is so cool. So here's a quick crash yeah, course so in the outfits required to fish these baits and the reasoning behind the oh, when, where, why yeah, and how to awesome make adjustments again. to the system. First Whoa, and foremost, the way I see it is go. you've got to go light to get the bite. There's a good but fish. this comes down to the terrain you're fishing oh, man, and the size of the brim that live there. Yep. Typically, you'll always be oh, fishing fish. light rods good relative fish. to the baits oh. you're using. But like I said, this will change due to location oh. and the caliber of That's fish. Got hard poles we'll get back on it to that there. soon. Oh, he's in it. He's in it. He's in it. Shit. Oh. The all-rounder oh, outfit would consist of a seven foot, right. seven foot three, one to three kilo rod with a fast taper and a reel in the 2,000 to two and a half thousand size. This outfit spool with braided line from four to 10 pounds is capable of fishing a wide variety of baits across all of the species. It is capable of fishing hard body lures, top water baits and vibes, but it's more at home fishing soft plastics in my opinion. Yep. The fast taper of this rod lends itself to identifying subtle bites and quick hook sets by engaging the power of the rod's lower end instantaneously as the tip section folds away rapidly. Unweighted BP man for the win. Telling you, Cyborg. Ruben's easy, man. I keep saying that, but you know what I mean? Yeah, there's a nice brim. Took me a little while. As has got me like five to three now. Possibly six, I don't know. That's I was a good one. Mention it. Just say that little BP50. Yeah, I'll tell you that. Little brim on the crab. On Where the it all starts season. to get a little more complex is lure and bait specific oh, techniques okay. that have rods designed to benefit the way you work specific lures or fight the fish once hooked. This thing is a horse. So this is my first hook up on a cranker crab. He just ate that, I wound into him. Six pounds straight through. The idea behind this Mabiru rod is it absorbs those lunges, those head shakes, keeps those tiny hooks in. Yes. Just picked up that lightweight crab. That's on that Mabiru rod. I got that from Ivan at Bait Tackle. He hooked us up and it's like a seven, eight, super fast tapered thing. It's kind of rod that uh, all the brim guys rave about for this crab technique. Just that tip absorbs all the lunges, all the impact of the head shakes. It's crazy. All right, I'm gonna get this big thing back. Oh, ease up, From mate. back in the day when I first started chasing brim on lures, the all-rounder outfit sufficed. As brim fishing progressed, the next big evolution to there, rods buddy. and techniques <laughs> was the change to fishing crankbaits for brim. You're on the board, mate. Good fish. <laughs> in my neck of the woods, this all took place in the canals and out on the shallow oh, reefs and flats. With full spinning fluorocarbon and slower tapered rods designed to keep trebled hooks in by absorbing the aggressive head shakes <laughs> and lunging runs <laughs> of big brim. brim. Big old blue nose. This became more prevalent with the introduction of baits such oh, as the cranker great. crab. I've cut my the small treble hooks on these baits <laughs> took on this to the next level that with even longer TLC rods from down. seven six up six to eight foot fluoro. and That's even out it. to nine foot in this some that, instances. Uh, major craft bait chinu I got off Ivan at bait tackle a while back there, just running that six pound fluoro all the way through. It's crazy. You just drop that crab in, you know, hardly move it. Every now and then, a little bit of a pop. These things are just picking it up. That's crazy cool. The use of full spinning fluorocarbon for extra shock absorption and an even faster tapered tip section was more advantageous when it comes to keeping these relatively small trebles set to stop them from pulling. Holy shit. I've fished this type of setup over the years, but I have found I prefer using braid on this outfit and have opted for running longer leaders to achieve the added shock absorption as opposed to using spinning fluorocarbon straight through. Yeah, because I'm running braid. Normally I'd run it on fluoro yeah, to give yeah. you the... Because these little tiny hooks, they just pull out so easy. Yeah, okay, 
Oh, is it Brim trying to eat it off? He got it off. Got it off for you. No shit. No way. That Brim ate that snag crab off. Depending on who you talk to and how they fish, you'll get different opinions on rods and reels. But tapers and technique specific outfits will be very similar across the board. Next we come to the baits. I've already mentioned a few baits, but we'll quickly touch base on the general baits out there, including some very recent new designs taking the brim fishing world by storm. So here's a quick recap of baits and techniques that I've seen and fished in my lifetime. It pretty much started with hard body lures. Firstly, we had Rebel Crawdads, then Attack Lures made some really effective baits. Then we had the Soft Plastic Boom, and initially, like a lot of others, I was fishing small single tail grubs out of the old man's tub of tails. Then Scrounger Grubs, and then we had the advent of Squidgy Soft Plastics, and the influx of baits that followed. The next big thing in soft plastics was the arrival of scent impregnated biodegradable baits like gulp. My first experience fishing gulp minnow worms was super productive, which I used to good effect to win my first team's event, smashing the field by over a kilo on the always tough waters of the Gold Coast. A little bit better than those little guys we've been piling in the boat. I just went to a minnow pattern, just three inch gulp minnow. Here's a little tip to doing your plastic. If you're putting your plastic on, you work it around that shank of that hook till you're back in line with the bar, uh, the point. Around the shank, poke him out. Bam, perfect. The next bait they released down the line that is still to this day responsible for more of my big brim captures is the gulp crabby of various sizes and colors. This bait has everything you would need in a brim bait. The right profile mixed with the right scent makes it deadly in such a wide variety of fishing situations with a heap of different applications. Next was the EcoGear SX40 Domination, which lasted years, followed by their PX range of topwater baits that were superseded by the still dominant OSP bent minnow baits. These topwater baits were and still are the most effective baits on the market when it comes to surface presentations for brim. It's a surface off now. So surface fishing for brim, like they just eat it, yeah? Like you just chuck a lure in and just do stuff and they just come up and eat it. Oh, there you go. Yeah! <laughs> That's how you do it. Don't you fall off there, buddy. There you go, my first one on top water for the day. Just went to that little MMD splash prawn. Good fun. Apparently, it's easy. That's cool. Look at that. Shortly after, Eco Gear released their bio baits in the way of the Aqua series, with their specifically designed amino acid infused brim prawn range. They remain to this day one of the most effective brim catching baits on the market. <laughs> the Victorian dentist, they call him. <laughs> you are, man. That's two in a row. <laughs> See, that's how you lip hook them. Yeah. See that? <laughs> See how I just no fell out? <laughs> Next was the introduction of one of the most unique designed brim lures to date, the Cranker Crab. This exact replica of a small crab that is well weighted with floating claws and hidden trebles was an absolute game changer to the world of lure fishing for brim. The most recent bait that has exploded on the brim fishing scene is another replica bait, this time of a mussel and is proving itself to be very effective down south where the existence of muscle yeah, beds yeah. are prevalent. Like I've said, this is a quick overview of Black some dog. of the baits out there and where and when to fish them. This thing's cool, I could go yeah, on for yeah. days talking about the subtle nuances of baits and how to fish them, but for now, that Bam. should be enough. Three, two, one. Oh, he's in here. There he goes. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I was offering me time but he was there. <laughs> the next thing what to the... get your head around is that if you think you need to go light right, to get the bite, like I do, yep. oh, you'll have oh, your work cut out for you when you try to extract he big brim from heavy on, structure. Oh, yeah dude, I think he's alright. Take fishing oyster leases for example. 
these gnarly structures require a substantial upgrade of outfits and terminal tackle to extract the brim that call these structures home. It's fishing tackle suicide, casting lures at these razor sharp clusters, using light line and leaders as getting the bite won't be a problem, but getting them out of there is a whole other undertaking. Another aspect of fighting a brim hooked on light line is drag pressure management throughout the fight. Initially, you want your drag set tight enough that when you strike on the hook set, you don't yes. concede any line. This is within reason, as you can't just lock up on light leader and expect it not to fail. The idea behind this is getting plenty of hook penetration. You've got to understand that when a brim hits your lure, it's biting down on it with a serious set of teeth. And if it's holding on while you're conceding line, the hook point ain't going anywhere. Go oh, don't. <laughs> He's there. He's there. <laughs> yeah. He carried on there. <laughs> oh, my God. If that oh, was he's mine. still going. He's still going. <laughs> if that was mine, he's gone. <laughs> I reckon that did a bit of leader damage. It was all about the angle of the dangle, that. Once you've got a good hook set, typically you'll want that pulling power of a tight drag to steer that fish clear of the structure. Oh, then backing that drag right. off once the fish is out and closer to you is a must, as stuff. it reduces the risk of pulling hooks or popping water. light leaders from their aggressive head shakes yep. and dogged oh. runs on a short oh, leash. Thunder. Oh, that's big. Oh, it's still there, turn. Oh, this is big. Yep, there's a fish. When it comes to setting hooks on brim, more often than not, they tend to hit the bait when it's floating still on the surface, on the pause midwater, or dead sticked on the bottom. cast. Nice start. That is a good brim. The biggest key to success when it comes to detecting bites and converting them is training your eye to watch the slack or belly in your line. There is always a subtle oh, ticking in line it, when the bait is paused or dead sticked. This is where a fast tapered rod and a quick retrieve with the reel helps come yeah, tight on the fish quickly the and sets the hooks cool, after a bite that when starting out, you not might not even know you have. Nice start. I don't think I even said what we're throwing. This is where having a braided line that is easily visible while floating on the surface helps to see the slight tick in the line stand out. Leader. And give you a split second. Brims just be twitching for your baits. <laughs> <laughs> so good, man. Oh no. Yeah, good times. Good times. Great day. Oh, I got a decent. I don't know how much more information I could jam into this video, but there is only so much I can say on each one of these topics to at least give you a basic understanding of what I believe are the fundamentals there of brim go. fishing. First fish. Only took two or three casts. Good start. State that crabby. Just on the sink. Don't move it. Just rip that slack up. There he is on the new fish film edit. Brag mats. The brag mat bloke. It's only a 26, 28 fork. Nice little fish though. Not bad, not bad. That's a good brim. He'd be a 30 forker. Can I say, bro? Brim lord. Good teacher. <laughs> the only other thing I know is that big brim are slow growing. And as many of them that are out there, I prefer to let the majority of my big brim go to live to fight another day. All right, obviously this is a super quick overview of brim fishing in general. If you have any questions that need further answering, hit me up in the comments below or on any of my socials. Right. Don't forget to check out my back catalogue of brim fishing videos Thank where I go into depths on technique specific like. information That's and the all the ways you can after. catch brim across oh, the country. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, thanks for watching. Water. Good luck catching. Cheers guys. So in the final hour, second good fish for the session. I'll take that. Just ate that BP50. That's an awesome fish.